All right, you guys. Hello, hello. Welcome back for another segment in the Real Talk for Business Mastery. This is August Crenshaw, and I am your host, and I have stayed excited throughout this entire event. You guys hear me say this before every speaker. Well, I'm a little extra excited because we are blessed today to have a speaker that some of you may already recognize and some of you may not, but I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm not going to say anything. I just want to at least say that I'm very humble that he is here, that he's taking time out of his very vigorous schedule to bless us with some more knowledge and wisdom on what it takes to pursue this entrepreneur endeavor. So Mike, would you please tell everyone who you are, what you do, and why you're here? Okay. Well, first of all, let me say thank you uh, for having me on the show. And um, hopefully uh, what we discuss today can help so many different yeah. people out there to, to achieve their dreams, because that's really what it's all about. Yes. Um, well, you know, the name is Mike Mentor, and um, I was um, born um, and raised in, in Oklahoma. Mm. And, um, and so now I'm the head coach at Campbell University. Um, you know, and I always wanted to play football. So, so it was something that was always in me. And um, went to the University of Nebraska on a football scholarship uh, from 92 to 96. And, uh, you know, we won two national championships, uh, championships there and got drafted to the Carolina Panthers in 97 and, uh, you know, played there for 10 years, uh, mm. uh, retired in 07. And, and um, from, from that, you know, I did some business um, ventures and, uh, you know, was able to, to build a, a, a company, a pretty sizable company. Um, and it, it just... At the end of the day, it wasn't fulfilling everything that I wanted to do. Okay. And, um, and so I got into coaching, and I became um, a high school coach first, a head coach there. And, and uh, we went to three state championships and, and won two of the three. And, All right. And, um, and I said, well, you know what, man, it's too easy. Let me, let me try college, right? And, <laughs> um, I said, well, I'm going to give myself five years to become a, a college head coach. Hmm. At the time, it was only nine African-American head coaches in, in Division One football. Hmm. Um, and I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to become number 10. All right. <laughs> uh, and so in three years, I became a head coach uh, at a Division I uh, college. And now I'm at Campbell University and been here for four years. And um, they was dead last when I took over the program, just similar to the high school program I took over. And um, and so you know, right now we're building um, in the fourth uh, fourth year. Um, every year we've improved, and um, you know, at the end of the day, it's about winning championships and, and sending guys to the National Football League. Of course, graduating kids and all that great stuff that that we do here, and and um, really giving people the keys to success and, yes. and how to be successful. And and so that's that's what I'm doing now. You know, I, I'm I'm always speaking. Um, I just had a speaking engagement um, last night, uh, talking to First Citizen Bank and, and their um, upper level people and um, about building a championship culture. What does that look like? What does that feel like? And, and so I went through that and, and um, you know, it was an IT department. And so can you imagine, right, <laughs> to the IT people, right, about um, how to build a championship culture in football. Now, so I'm trying to bring it up and make it live and exciting. And um, and at the end of the day, um, I got done, and they gave me a standing ovation. So if I get a standing ovation, <laughs> IT people, I think I'm good. <laughs> oh, God, I'm like so sitting there visualizing it. Yes, keep going. I'm sorry. I'm visualizing it, though. Motivation to the <laughs> IT department. I got you. <laughs> It's amazing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love you. I mean, I didn't want to interrupt you, but that, that was hilarious. So you can, I'm sorry, you can keep going. No, that's good. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, that's basically, um, you know, who I am and, and what I've been through uh, real quickly. And, <clears throat> and, um, and so, you know, just excited to, again, just share wisdom um, and, and all the things that I've been through in my 43 years. I've I've been able to see a lot. God has mm -hmm. been able to open up a lot of different doors in this 43 years of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, 
you know, so we'll, we'll get through the stories and all that type stuff and, 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 and people will begin to see that, uh, man, really have met a lot of people who imparted a lot of wisdom uh, uh -huh. into, into my life. And so I'm, I'm happy um, to be uh, able to give it back to people because I feel like this. I feel like God, when he gives it to you, he don't give it to you so that you can keep it. Right. He, it's for other people. So he gives it to you so you can give back. And um, that's the that's the purpose of your gift. That's that's the purpose of of what you gain in life, and and, and so that's that's what I live by, and, and uh, that's what I'm doing here today. Absolutely. Now I love that. There are there are a ton of things that I heard just you know from your intro. <clears throat> I hear humble beginnings, mm. but I hear how that didn't detect that didn't dictate your journey, your path. You you were goal oriented, and you never settled. I hear things like, "Oh, I did this, but that was too easy. I want to elevate. I want to take it to the next level. I want to defy odds. I want to break barriers." You know, this without regard to, you know, race or anything. I'm hearing, you know, giving back, taking on challenges. Yes, talking to IT people that all they want to do is sit in a, you know, their little corner and, you know, push a couple of buttons and for you to get them to say, yeah, we're going to have some culture up in here, we some camaraderie and the spirit. So you, you've, you've, got, you've already left the trace evidence of a lot of characteristics that a lot of entrepreneurs need to take in and need to hone in for them. So I don't know, are you, are you comfortable maybe talking a little bit more about your humble beginnings? Because before I let you answer the question, I just want everybody that's listening to think about it from this perspective. It's easy to make an excuse, you know, and, and that, and that's the one thing that I don't want. I can look and I can say, that I'm a married woman and I've got these kids and I'm in the city and I'm with no fam I don't have any family support. So it's too hard to build a business. Or I can look and I can say, hey, um, I'm married, I got these kids and it's it's difficult, but I gotta get this business and I gotta get it up and running because I have to get back my control. It's about the perspective. And so I have a feeling that your story, you know, that, you know, giving us some snippets of your humble beginnings is going to make sure that anybody that's watching, whatever is blocking you or stopping you, that you, at least you perceive that it is, you can obliterate it. You know, if you have the mindset and the will to go after, you know, what it is that you want. So what were some of those humble beginnings that you had to, you know, push out of your mind and still have laser focus to be goal oriented? You, you, you know, um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me, let me say this first, because I think people are, are kind of in two categories in life, right? Mm -hmm. um, they, they either what Earl Nightingale called a river or they go oriented, right? So um, a river person is a person that understands right now who they, who they are. They understand right now why they was put on this earth. And so they, they just immerse themselves in that and right away. You know, they, they, they don't have to find out who they are. They, from day one, they know, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, you know, a goal-oriented type person is a person, of course, that set goals and it's destinations. River is about journey. It's about the process, right? And then you know, goal-oriented, it's about the destination. All right, I set this goal. I get there. I achieved it, blah, 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 right? Well, I'm, I'm a river person, right? Now, I do use goals um, within the process, right? But, but I'm a river person. I knew from day one, right? So January the 15th, 1974, I came into the world. And that day, I tackled a nurse. First day. <laughs> Boom. Right? I knew I wanted to play football. Nobody ever said, Mike, pick up a football. So uh, because of that, I think it, anything around me, I didn't pay attention to, mm -hmm. right? I, I, so, so any barriers that people say that they have in their life, regardless of what it is, um, I never paid attention to that because my focus was all on achieving a championship. It was always achieving to be the greatest team around, um, the greatest player around. And so I never really focused on, that I was poor and didn't have nothing to eat, <laughs> right? I mean, because I look, I'm outside playing all day long by myself with my imaginary friends playing football <laughs> and 
little kids. So, oh, so I don't know if they know about imaginary friends. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, we, we had a lot of fun, right? So um, this is what this is what I was doing. So I was always in 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 what people will call fairy tale world, right? Mm. Um, but I think that's one of the most important things that we need to keep is the ability to dream. Yes. Okay. The the ability to visualize. That's what it is. Now, the amazing thing is, is that as we get older, we get taught opposite. We say, they, they teach us, no, put that down. It's for little kids. You, you don't need to dream no more. This is reality. This is how the world works, right? And, yeah. and I'm saying, well, that doesn't make sense. Um, why will we focus on the things that we don't want? Hello. I mean, so, so, so again, um, that, that is what gave me the ability to move through my humble beginnings, right? So um, my mom, it, it was my mom, single parent, and four of us, uh, two older sisters and one younger brother. And um, I'm the third of the four. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, mom had to work. Uh, she was a hairstylist. Uh, hey. And, um, and so, you know, my sisters basically raised me and my brother. As, okay. As coming up. They, they're, you know, they're five and six years older than, than me and my brother. My brother's a year and a half younger than me. And so, um, so basically, that's, that's how it worked. Uh, and again, football, when I could play it in the third grade was the first time. I, I was so, you know, just overtaken by the fact that I can play this game now against real people, right, with real pads. And, and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I just loved it. I just loved. So it was a passion. It was a desire. It was a. It was. It was something in me that just drive me. You know, um, um, Napoleon Hill talks about the the burning desire that's mm. inside, right? And 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 you know that's what drives you. And so it. it man, I, I just loved. It. I love practice. I I love. You know, we used to walk to practice. It didn't matter. We we go anywhere to play the game of football. And um, and then of course basketball, and, and then um, you know in the summer was basketball, then right back to football. So we was constantly um, busy, mm -hmm. and um, and so we we didn't have much, you know, and it, it was tough. Um, my, my mom, um, my grandmother had fourteen kids, and so um, so my mom had you know thirteen brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. so our family is huge, right? So if you go. Um, to Lawton, Oklahoma, right, and asked about the Alexanders, everybody knows, right? <laughs> you were the city. <laughs> yeah, we did, right? And um, so that's what we, we grew up competing, mm. to, right? And, and, and so that, that was the fun thing about understanding how to compete. I understood people. Yeah. I used to always just pay attention to all my different cousins, my, you know, my aunts and uncles, um, and just pay attention to what they say, how they react, what's going on. So I was in the, I was in the lab early. Mm. Understanding the, the hum it, it, it fascinated me. So that was the other thing that fascinated me was how human, how the human mind worked. Yes. I used to be fascinated by that. And I'll just sit around all day and just listen, man, and, and, and just pay attention. And, and, and so I taught myself this, this skill which really helped me when I became a football player because I understood my teammates. I yes. understood how to get them motivated on certain things. And so I became the leader um, because I was able to do that and, mm. and show them, okay, look, guys, this is how we're going to win. All right. This, this is what we're going to do. This is what coach is saying. And, and, and so let's, let, let's, let's go this way. And, um, and so we, you know, I've won championships since I've been started. Right. Um, elementary, junior high, high school, um, college, and then, you know, with the Panthers, we went to the Super Bowl um, in, in 04, it was the 03 season, and 04 played the Patriots. Uh, they cheated, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I tell everybody that. And, and um, But, no, them, them guys are great. And, and, and so, anyway, that's what I've been doing all my life. Mm. Wow. I understand how to bring people together to yes. then focus on 
a goal and a vision to be the best. I love this. I always wanted I always wanted that. Again, nobody in my family gave me that picture, mm. but it was something inside of me that said, man, I want to be excellent. I want to be different. I want to be the best that ever done it. And um, and so that that's what drove me. You know, it was the same thing in, in, in the classroom. You know, I wanted to be the smartest kid in the classroom. And so I would I would come into a class. So and then I would look at everybody and I would study everybody that first week. And I'm like, okay, that kid right mm -hmm. there is probably going to be my competition. <laughs> oh, <laughs> by that kid. And then I would I would um, intimidate that kid. Um, with <laughs> Right, so I'm like I'm gonna be the best one. <laughs> you are hilarious. Can I can I interject for a second? Because there's there's some jewels. There's some really serious jewels in all of your humor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, man! So I hear three things: innate abilities, burning desire, and knowing people. You know, so for some of you. That's what I want you to question. I want you to question the burning desire because what I found is that, you know, some, some people say like kill your shine or dim your light. And, and that's what I want to know is somebody's like extinguish the fire, the burning desire. And so for some of you that are listening, you are those people, you, you know, you know what you were blessed with and have you found yourself dimming your light? Have you found yourself saying, oh, well, you know, that's that's kind of, you know, hoopla. That's a, a fantasy idea that that's thinking over the top. Or have you challenged or do you are you in a position to challenge yourself to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to dim my light anymore. And, and the thing about it is you don't you didn't start off on the top like you started off with imaginary friends. Eventually you started with friends. And you know what? And for some of you. Literally, I mean, this is a nugget. You may know that you're destined to be a speaker. You don't have a single speaking event. But what can you do right now to not allow the fire to be completely put out? Matter of fact, put some, you know, get that thing and build it up. Stand in front of the mirror. Fall in love with your voice. You know, there's a there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. But be confident enough to to look at yourself in the face and practice saying, you know, I'm speaking to these people and I'm speaking life and energy into them. And when you do this and when you do that and and the crowd is going wild and you know, imagine and visualize that. Thing happening because that's basically what you were doing you you got the ball you throw it up in there catch it touchdown you ain't even ran nowhere you know you just <laughs> look at they trying to get me they trying to get me you shaking people there's nobody there and as silly as it sounds as as, 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 as childlike as it is that's the place where you have to stay you know and it doesn't make a difference if we're talking practical or if we're talking spiritual you know I put a twist a lot of times for instance like the Bible is say you know unless you become like a child, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. It, it's all about getting back to basics. It's about being rudimentary. It's not always about necessarily looking into, you know, salvation and getting to the end of the tunnel. God has always talked to us about how we bring the kingdom here, how we execute here, how we live life here, how we enjoy things here. And so what I'm hearing from you is that's that jewel. You guys need to take the jewel that he's giving that's saying, yeah, you know what? I've been putting out my fire. Well, it's a little bit of smoke there. You know, I don't know. Maybe you got to get a match, a piece of timber. Maybe you got to get some paper. But I'm going to need you to light the fire back up on your dream. And whatever it looks like, even in your adult state, get back that childlike fire back. So that's that's one jewel that I want people to take away. But the last one, the most important one, is that you study people from day one. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people... <sighs> It's like, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to run my own life as if once you become an entrepreneur, now you don't have to deal with people. Because a lot of, because think about it, a lot of individuals, one of my uh, speakers talked about interpersonal relationships. You think once you leave a job and you start your own business that everything is going to be okay, but you still got to deal with people. Whether that's your team that you end up hiring, whether those clients that end up paying you, you have got to know and understand people. And when you have a passion for bringing the best out of people, when you have a passion for raising the spirit of camaraderie, you get amazing results every single time. So the other question you guys have to ask yourself, 
if you're listening, is how do I do with people? Because a lot of you, you may be pushing. You may have a bona fide product. You may have bona fide marketing. You may understand everything about email marketing, list building, cold con contacts, warm prospects, all of that stuff, but you feel like you can't break through the barrier to get to the next mark, whether you can't get a client at all or you can't go up level. Maybe you're bringing in a couple thousand a month, but now you want it to be 10. Maybe, you're, maybe you are some pretty big earners, and you, but you still can't elevate. The golden nugget may be in the relationships. It may be in that ability to connect and to bond with people. So like I said, you guys, I love this summit because there's so much that comes out of just casual conversations. How well do you all relate with people? Because using your voice, this, this is your gift. You speak things into existence. You make things happen. Okay, so those look, I'm enjoying this. I've been laughing at you like crazy because you're funny as all get out. But yes, I love this because there's so there's wisdom, lots of wisdom in you, man. Okay, what's on your mind? Because you look like you had some thoughts from me speaking. You, you can take the mic back or did you <laughs> go ahead? <laughs> well, no, I, I think you was doing an excellent job of, of really pulling out exactly the building blocks <laughs> of what success looks like, right? So um, I, I think the when you look at what mo, what what everybody needs mm -hmm. right, is 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 what I call the cornerstone. Okay, so mm -hmm. so what what people need is what the first cornerstone is 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 what I call industriousness, right? So what is industriousness? Industriousness is this mm -hmm. hard work. Yes, but not just hard work because think about it. It's a lot of people out there working very very hard. Mm -hmm. that, but they don't have anything, okay? So it's not just hard work. It's hard work with a purpose and a plan. Mm. And so you must have that purpose and plan. You must know where you're going. That then helps you get rid of all the other stuff, and then now you can focus on where you need to go, okay? And so that's one of the cornerstones that you must have. If you if, Listen, if you don't do that, you might well just pack up and, and go home. You have all the great ideas you want. But if you don't have that industriousness, you can just go home. Just just pack it up and go home, right? Or go work for somebody else and let them tell you what to do. Right? Exactly. Go up at, at nine, go to go to work and go home at five, right? So that that's basically what, what happens. If if you don't know how to do that, then mm -hmm. you know that that's what happens. So um, the other cornerstone here is what we talked about is the passion, it's enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. See, you must love what you do. It, it, we, I, I hear a lot of people talk about this. Love what you do. Pick something that you love, that, you know, and, and, and so, you know, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that um, is, we say it so many times that people forget and, 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 and let it go over. Uh-huh. And, and, and so I tell people that, when you follow your dreams, okay, God will show up and show you your purpose. You got to follow your, you got to follow your passion though. If you do not follow your passion, it's going to be very difficult for you to hear because now you're doing things that don't, you're not supposed to be doing and, and you build up barriers and walls. And so when, when God is trying to speak to you, you can't hear it. Okay? <laughs> he can only okay. speak to you when you're in your passion because mm -hmm. now you're relaxed. Now you're doing what you love, and now you're able to hear, okay, you go this way, and this is what's down that street, and this is what I'm going to give you down there, right? And then you begin to understand, oh, this is my purpose. This is why I have what I have. Yes. So, so again, those two cornerstones, people must start with that. They must start with industriousness mm -hmm. and enthusiasm. Once they start with that, then they'll be able to go to other places, but um, that, that, that's, number, that's number one. You've got to have a cornerstone. Now, I love the way that you, of course, the hard work. I ain't going to even beat them with the hard work because if they didn't seen a couple other segments by now, they'd be like, did this woman say this to us one more time? Because <laughs> there's certain themes, no matter what we're speaking about, continue to go through the summit. But I really want to, you know, zoom in on that passion thing just a little bit more because a lot of people aren't differentiating between doing what they love versus doing what they're good at doing. And I know that for me personally, 
just without even telling the whole story, I was a cosmetologist for 20 years. And because of some circumstances, I ended up designing jewelry. I was trying to help somebody else to do their own thing, but I found that I can magnetize whatever I want to me. And in helping them, doors were opening. I was saying these doors are opening for us, but it was so overwhelming. They kind of backed down, but I just went through them. And I was like, ooh. I'm, I'm supposed to design jewelry. That's like my next big thing. And it made sense. You know, I'm a hairstylist. They come, they get their hair done. They also can get, you know, some trinkets, you know, look beautiful. You know, it makes sense. But when I finally broke away and I came to Houston, I was like, wow, I'm good at doing jewelry, but I don't want to do it. And what I found out about myself, and this is something that I usually ask my clients is, what can you do even when it's ugly? Mm. You know, because designing jewelry Sometimes if I was feeling a little bad, you know, it could distract me sitting there playing with all the little things. But sometimes if I was in the wrong place, me and jewelry, we just weren't going to get along. But when it came to helping people, I could be having a bad day. Everything is wrong. Didn't get me sleep. Son kept me up all night. Husband, I'll do you still love me? Should we stay together? You know, like I'm everything just exploding. But somebody could say, oh, my God, I'll get such and such happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Girl, we can't have you down. You got to keep on believing. You can't stop. And I would jump into a zone and in talking to someone else and helping them through their situation, I would be sitting there having to feed, you know, eat the, all the same thing I was dishing out and saying, yeah, it's okay. You know, everything would be all right. And so I found that my passion really is people helping give them resolve no matter what. So everybody that's watching, are you doing something that you're good at doing? Or are you doing what you're passionate about? Because, you know, what he said is if you're not relaxed, if you're not in the zone, you can't hear the wisdom that's trying to be downloaded to you because you're scatterbrained. You're doing too many things. And I'm going to tell you what it really boils down to is that you're trying to make it happen. Yeah. You know, when, when, you, when something is your destiny, then, you know, you can't always just be the person pushing. Yeah. You know, you, you at some point you have to realize that there, that's why they call them miracles. You know, there are just certain things. People say it's the universe. You're attracting things to you. There's an element of God that's in us, but there's still the element of God that's exterior. And so if everything is about the push and you're trying to make stuff happen, you're going to overexert yourself. You're going to die down. And when you're frustrated, when you're stressed out, that stifles your ability to hear. That stifles your creativity, which stifles your growth. And that lets you know that you're not operating in your passion. Your passion can come out. Even when it's ugly, it goes back to what she said when you were a kid. Yeah, I couldn't pay attention whether or not there was food to eat because you were passion driven. So, man, nuggets, all jewels, man. I'm loving this conversation. I'm keep 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 going. Your story, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving your knowledge, your pillars. So hard work, passion. I'm I'm gonna give it back to you, Mikey. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well you gotta have it, right? And and um, and I'm sure. Everybody else that that has done an interview talk about those things. They they come somewhere in the conversation because you got to have those things. And, and, uh, and it, it, one of the things that you said that that kind of uh, made me think was the fact that you said that you know I, I, I did hair, um, then I started creating jewelry, right? And I started um, doing that. And then it was you know my passion was really people. So really what I hear is, is, is the passion is, is creativity. And so when you when you helping people, you creating. That's what mm. you're creating. You creating this you, you hear this this um, kind of rough draft of what they want to do and where they want to go. And then you like, okay, let me help you create your life. Now we're yeah. talking about life instead of jewelry and hair, we're talking about creating people's life. And, yes. and so uh, man, that's that's where it's at and and um, Boy, that's good. So, so anyway, yeah. Um, you know, as I was um, going through um, school um, and playing ball, um, what what I, what I really realized is really what you speak and what you really believe is really true. Yes. In third grade, I'm watching TV, and um, I'm watching Nebraska play on TV, and I'm saying, man, it was something about it. it Jump off at me! I said, I'm going to that school. Right? That's the school I'm going to. And and so from that point on, I told everybody. Now, again, I'm in the third grade. I don't know the, the power of, of the spoken word. I don't know any of that. I, I, I don't know about affirmations. 
Um, I, I don't know the power of affirmations um, or the power of belief. Mm -hmm. I just believed it. It was like I'm going there and, and nobody's just going to tell me that I'm not going to go there. And, and But I never knew that it was even a possibility that it couldn't happen. Yeah. Like that, that never even came to me. So never. Okay, so from third grade all the way to I get a call from Coach Osborne my senior year in high school, which is the head coach at the University of Nebraska at the time. Mm -hmm. But for that time, I'm telling everybody I'm going to Nebraska, right? Yes. And, and, and most people just say, oh, yeah, that's good. You know? <laughs> and, and I remember when we was in um, high school, and um, it, it was a local um, university in, 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 uh, in, in Lawton. It was a smaller school, uh, NAIA school at the time, and um, so very, the, the lowest level of, of football. And they had invited us to come to a game because they were recruiting us, right? And and I said, man, I'm not going to that. And they was like, hey, look, Mike, you can't you can't count your chicken before a hat. Mm. I'm like, what you talking about, man? I'm going to Nebraska. That's all I know, right? At this time, I haven't even talked to Nebraska at this time, right? I said, man, I'm going there. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Well, you know, you need to go, um, you know, and I'm like, look, I'll go with y'all to give y'all some company, but, uh, you know, my mind is not on this football team. Come on now. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and, and eventually I get the call from Nebraska, and, and I committed before I even seen, you know, the university. And, um, and so, again, my, my point in all that is, Whatever you holding on to, hold on. Yeah. Right. Regardless of what people are saying. Now, this is something that I learned later on in life. Is is this? Is when God gives you something, or, or when you get that um, that vision, mm -hmm. you gotta hold on to it until it becomes very, very deep into your subconscious. Because yes, so people can snatch it away. To see, this is what this is what the Bible is talking about when it when it when it says that. You know, it, it'll come and snatch it away from you real quick. Real quick. And so, and so you have to, you got to guard it. Yeah. You got to protect it. You got to be quiet about it. You can't tell everybody. You can't tell nobody. Let it grow. Let the roots get deep. Then once they deep, yeah. why do you tell? Because it's going to happen. There's nothing nobody can do at this point, right? They can't stop it. Exactly. <laughs> All I can do is, is be in amazement when, when it happens. Because they're going to doubt it. Oh man, there's no way, blah blah, and then boom, it happens. They like, mm -hmm. man, this this person is a prophet, right? <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> so, so this, is, this is what happens, and and uh, so again, with all that, all, all I'm saying is, hold on to your yes. vision, hold on to that passion, and then protect it until mm. it becomes deep rooted in you, and then at that point, you can start speaking it. So many people get it and start speaking too fast. See. They start speaking it out. I'm doing this. I'm going to go do this. I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it ain't rooted in you yet. Right. Be quiet. Go, you know, th this is why. I mean, think about it. Think about it now. You know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I, I talk, I refer back to the Bible a lot. So Come on now. Just think about, uh, you know, Jesus Christ before he became um, the Messiah, right? Um, he went into the wilderness, you yeah. know, Paul, when he got, uh, when he was Saul, and then when he became Paul, for three years, he went into the wilderness, right? And and, and so he's getting deep-rooted. Yes. Right? Before he said anything. So <laughs> think about it. Jesus Christ for 30 years was letting it root. Yes. Right? Yes, I got you. I'm tracking. Powerful for three years. And couldn't nobody stop it. Why? Because it was already deep root. It was nothing nobody could say. And so I'm just saying, protect it. Spend time letting it mm. get rooted in you. And then and then when you go out and speak it. Yeah. Now it manifests. Right. And so I think that's what people have to do. They got to slow down. I know you're excited. I know it's good. I know you saw the finish line. I, I know you saw what it looks like. Um, but you got to calm down enough to be able to be disciplined, mm -hmm. to be able to keep it to yourself until it's time, right, to reveal to the world what you're about to do.
Yeah, no, I thought about a couple of stories when you said that, but no, I'm I'm definitely tracking. Uh, when I'm when I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about the person who just got hit. Oh my God! You know, I'm supposed to do X, Y, and Z, and you know, unfortunately, like you said, when we're when we're born, we're like dream, dream, dream. You could be anything you want to be. And then after that, it's like, okay, so what do you want to be? You No, you don't want to be a whatever that is. You want to be a doctor, lawyer, Indian. This is, this is what you do to make money. This is what you do to survive. You know, no, you can't dream. You need to get a career. You need to go down this path. And so that, that muscle and that mechanism, it's basically, it's almost destroyed. Not completely because it's the creative nature of how we were brought up as beings, but it's been suppressed. And so here it is, a person all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get an epiphany, you get a spiritual download that you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But even within yourself, people, please understand what he's saying. Even within yourself, there's a piece of you that's going to be like, ooh, and it's going to be like, whoa. I mean, I don't know if people have read the book called The Dream Giver uh, by Bruce Wilkinson, but he talks about that, how you hear it and it's like, well, whoa, can I do that? You know, let's just be real. You're going to, even though you may know, there may even be a little bit of trace evidence of doubt in you. And most people, what we don't understand is that when they start counter attacking what we believe in, they think that they're helping us. Mm -hmm. They think that they're protecting us. Your family, they wanted you to play football. They, they believed that you were going to do that. But just in case it was in Nebraska, you know, we don't, we want you to still be able to play. So, you know, Hey, you got some pretty high hopes. And if they've seen life not always be as favorable, they're going to impose their mindsets, their thoughts, their beliefs, their expectations, their experiences, all of that stuff on you. And, and, and that's why you got to hold it. I'm not going to um, go too far into it, but just so you know, when you said that, you made me think about the story with Nehemiah. When he first had that epiphany about building that, going out there to, you know, rebuild the temple, he's like, hmm, he didn't tell anybody for a while. He, he held it. And, and think about all of the, 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 the torture and the pain that they went through with losing the temple in the first place. And, you know, with all of the, the enemy that was dealing, that was constantly attacking them, it would be unbelievable. You know, but eventually the doors open. And, that, and that's the thing, too. You, you have to give things a, t a chance to take root. And you also want to give things a chance to also let you see the power of manifestation, let you see the hand of God, you know, moving things because there will always, I'm a firm believer that there, there will always be evidence that you're supposed to do something beyond just you. You know, there's something's going to show up, something's going to happen to let you know that this thing that you wanted to do you can do it. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to be a word from some person, a stranger on the street. It's going to be something you see on TV. It's going to be a financial blessing. It's going to be a door that opens through people, but there's usually always some form of evidence. And I like to tell people to sit in that season of getting their mind right, doing what you're saying, let it seep into their, seep into, seep into their subconscious and also allow the evidence to appear. And what I find with a lot of people, and I know I'm kind of going on a, on a segue, is that a lot of people want to do something great, but they're looking for people to tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. They're looking for that external confirmation first, and then they internalize it. Mm -hmm. You're saying internalize it, mm -hmm. and then allow the external conf confirmation to manifest. So I know I kind of went around on like a little circle or whatever with all that information. I hope everybody connected the dots you know, all the way back. But yeah, once again, brilliant points. People, where are you at? Speak it, hold on to it, get it firmly rooted because somebody's going to counter argue what you're saying and they're going to say it because they believe that they're helping you. But there are some of you, you got some dreams, they're high, they're big, they're astronomical. And you're talking to people who haven't done what you what you want to do. You're, you're speaking to people who don't have the same capacity to dream. And it will. It will squash it. You want to speak to people that are going to be like, for real? Well, if you're going to do that, did you think you could do this too? You might need to tell them, slow down, slow down. That ain't my dream. That must be yours. You know, you want that level of energy. But you don't want anything to, to come against that. And a lot of us, I don't think we realize that our dreams, they get extinguished as well because we're we're hearing wisdom and it's it's not god given it's it's not in tune or in alignment you know with who we are and where we're supposed to be yeah no absolutely so if you think about 
the time frame of being in the wilderness. I'm gonna mm -hmm. call it that, right? So to let your roots get deep inside of you about whatever your vision is. Um, if you think about in the third grade is is when I decided I want to go to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So the dream and the vision comes, and then it doesn't happen until my 12th grade year, right? And so all those years, what are you doing when you're in the wilderness? And mm -hmm. I think that's what people got to understand because it's not just sitting there like a monk. And you just hold your room, um, um, you know, and meditating all day. No, that's that's not what you're doing during that time. What you're mm. doing during this time is you create discipline. Yeah. Doing. And so you got to now create routines. You got to create things that keep you on task. This is where your 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 um um you know your your habits come in. Uh huh. So now you got to start developing that, and and so that's where that's what you need to be doing. So now you got to start reading books, you start getting information. Okay, let me put that. In. I like that. Let me put that into my routine. And yes. Now you start creating it. So when you get there to that to that final dream destination, you're ready. You're prepared. Okay. Not only are the roots of belief is deep in you, but now you have some 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 tools to use. Yes. To now make that dream grow. Yes. And so, so many people, they, that's what they don't do. They don't go in deep to start to begin to understand, let me create these different type of disciplines in my life so um, I can make that dream grow uh, to the place that I need to make it grow, right? And so that's, that's, that's the, I think that's the other piece now yes. people start to understand this. Okay, when I go into that wilderness, what am I doing, Mike? Well, this is what you're doing. You creating routine. You creating disciplines, um, so so that you can become a person that has self control, mm -hmm. a person that has alertness, a person that's aware of what's going on. So you creating this awareness about yourself, about yourself, about your environment, um, about whatever it is that you want to go into, right? And so you creating this knowledge, and you getting it. Um, you're creating this initiative, this self-ability to create and not worry about external, right? Yes. Internal. It comes from inside. And so now you're creating that. And, and, and then um, uh, eventually you're creating um, intentness. Which yes. Is over time, right? And so you 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 are persevering. you you understanding how to build that muscle inside you. And so when you get there, because it is going to be things to try to knock you down. You're tough and you're ready. Yes. You throw it and, and then you make it happen. Uh, this is where people lose right here. Yes. This is where they lose. Because they get the, they get the dream, they get the vision, and, and they want to go right now towards the end. Mm -hmm. so, so they start going right now towards the end. And it's, you know, busy work. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Like you said, working hard. And it's, and it's hurting you. Yes. And so what they need to be doing is now going into the wilderness. Get the dream. Go into the freaking wilderness. Get your discipline. Get your <laughs> understanding. Right? And then you'll be ready um, when, when the dream comes and the opportunity comes. Now you're ready to flourish and make that thing bigger than, than what you thought. Yes, what I hear is habituated behavior. Yes. You know, to, sum it, to sum it up, and, and, and I, I'm going to use myself as an example you know, I remember, I'm like, oh, God, I got all these things I'm supposed to be doing. Motivational speaking, supposed to be a life coach. I can see myself writing books. I can do all of these different things. And for a second, it was like, okay, wait a minute, August, sit down. Exactly what are you supposed to be doing? And, and the thing about it is when I said, okay, I can see the overall vision. I can see all of those things happening. But when I got the laser focus and saying, okay, it goes back to the creativity, creating change in people's lives, okay, helping them to be who they're supposed to be, then those downloads kept coming. And there are certain behaviors that I habituated myself to. So like for, from a bit like with you, you wanted to play football. So I could imagine that every time I turned around, you had a football in your hand. I could imagine that there might have been a couple people that tested you and you had to go, we're going to fight if you don't give me my ball back because it was that ingrained in your body. You weren't the kind of person that was always slouched around sitting on the steps. You were running. 
you were moving. Or when you found out you had to be strong, whether you had weights or not, you were like, I can use, you know, something in the house, fill up these gallons of jugs of water, and I'm going to, you know, lift them. I'm, you, you're like, I'm going to get my body ready. You know, those are the, because you believe, because you really, really believe. And so for some of you, you're listening, you're entrepreneurs, and this whole online arena has tricked the mechanism in your brain to think that you can cheat success. <laughs> you can't cheat success. There's no, what if somebody uh, says there's no elevator, you still got to take the stairs. You know, you have to go through the process. And so if you listen, you may have to habitual, habituate yourself to doing lives. I could, I remember when I saw a notification, you've done 500 live streams. I'm like, whoa, okay, I'm catching up with Gary Vee, not that close, but you know what I'm saying. I'm like, okay, I'm doing my live streams faithfully, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm, I'm practicing, yes. you know, articulating the goals and the vision, speaking with people. I am practicing motivational speaking every single day by doing it because I see myself on the stage. I see myself in the future. I'm like, okay, what can I do to create groups or circumstances where I can test out a product or do this or writing stuff down? You said something in the beginning that was key. You're not getting ready to just sit down and journal it. You know, I, I, I know almost every uh, entrepreneur at some point comes across the secret, the law of attraction, and you watch the documentary, you read the book, and you journal in a way, you got a $10,000 check on the wall, you got a picture frame with the million dollars, you got a vision board, and you just sitting there and you thinking yourself into your destiny. Go right on ahead. Go ahead and think you're going to uh, win a marathon and you can't run down a block. You, have, you got to condition yourself. You, know, you have got to habituate yourself to certain behaviors. And, you know, so my thing is you want to be an author, you want to write a best-selling book. Sorry, boo. You may have to go ahead and put about 10 or 15 e-books out there that only get you one sale, no sales, 10 sales, 20 sales. But you don't understand you're exercising a muscle. And it's still, all of this is connected. That's one of my favorite phrases. Everything is connected because it goes back to what you said earlier in the conversation about understanding people. See, you've got an idea, you've got a concept, and it's a business that you're creating to relate to people, but you only relating to yourself, and you think you're going to go out here and make a ton of money? No, you've got to put it out there, and you've got to listen to the response or the lack of response That's to right. say, what do I tweak and what do I change? It doesn't mean that you're ineffective. It doesn't mean that what you're doing doesn't work. No, you're working it. You're developing the muscles. You're developing the mental muscles, and if you're going to be an entrepreneur, like you said, this is the make it or break it part of the season. It's like, okay, you know, if you can't get through, not the season of the training, if you can't get through this part, you're not, you're not going to make it. You are not going to make it. So what behaviors can you habituate yourself to that show that what you speak, you really believe? Because what you speak is what you do, and what you do is what manifests. That's what you did from the third grade. And so some of you, you got to ask yourself, did I start writing a blog three months ago and I thought I was going to get rich? <laughs> you know, you don't look, don't believe the hype. There's no six steps to six figures in six days. And if it is, you will probably see six bars, you know, in front of your face. It's probably illegal. You know, seriously, there are, there are steps. There are many, many components to success. Habituate your behavior, people. Habituate your behavior. You can't you, you can't skip it, right? A lot of people want to skip it. So so this is what I say to my players today, right? We we live in what I call the ESPN world, right? We live in highlights. Yeah, that's, that's all we want, right? We want the highlights. We don't want the ninety eight percent of the mundane, hard stuff that we talking about right now. Yes, we, have to, we don't want that. We want just the highlight of the mountaintop. Yes. So, and, and, and so this is what we do. So we do it on Facebook. We do it on Instagram. We do. It. This is why these things are popular because they highlight. Yes. Some of these highlights are even lying to you, right? So, yeah, hello. <laughs> right? So you got these highlights, and so people say, "Man, that's that's how I want to live my life." And so they create this virtual reality life that they put out there to people that they living in these highlights. Uh huh. Right? And great people don't live in highlights. No. You only see the great people highlights. Okay? They don't live in it. They live in the mundane 98% hard, boring. Uh, it, it ain't fun. This part what we're talking about right now is not fun. So no. get some glamour in this one. You, you're not going to get 
you know, pat it on, the, uh, on, on your back and say how great you're doing during this time, okay? You're not going to feel like you're moving the bar during this time, okay? Hello. Where they move, the champions move is during mm -hmm. this time. And so that's what people got to understand. Here's the other thing you got to create with the, with the um, you know, habitual habits. It's, it's, it's really, um, at the end of the day, a system, mm -hmm. okay? What is your system? Everybody has a system. Everybody has one, even if you don't know you have one. Right? Yes. So either you created it or somebody else created it for you. But you got one. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening to people is that most people are getting their system created by what we call the iPhone um, technology, right? So when you get a notification, you jump. See? Yeah. That's the system. No that that's why they give them to you, because they know that it's going to make you jump. Boom, there, there it is. Okay, let me move. Let me look, right? And and so I got I to gotta look at my Facebook as soon as I wake up. You know, look, you, you're not moving the bar at all by looking at that Facebook, but you no. got to do it, and you're just doing it. And then, and so, you know, I got to look at my emails. I got to, wh whatever you're looking at, right? you letting the world right now create your system. Yes. So what I'm telling you, the great ones create their own system. When they, when they wake up, they do certain things. Bop, 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 bop. Every single day. It's a system, man. And the system, that's what the system does. It takes your habits, right? Yes. It puts it in there, but it also gives you feedback. And you have to get constant feedback on, like you were saying, when I put out these 1,000 um, um, e-books, right? And, and what kind of feedback I'm getting? Yes. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it nothing? All right, what do I need to change? That's why you need the feedback because where do I need to grow? Where do I need to change? Where do I need to get better? And so yes. now, okay, that's weak. I need to get better on that. Now let me go get education in that area. Right? Yes. And then I grow in that area. And so this is this is the whole process, man. So your, your, your system has to measure what you're doing. Yes. Okay. And like I tell everybody, if you're not measuring it, it's not getting done. <laughs> okay. Come on now. <laughs> you just, yeah, like that. If you're not measuring it, it's not getting done. <laughs> That's right. So you better measure it. Whatever it is, you better measure it if you want to get it done. So, um, you know, that that's really that, – that, if people get that, which most people say, I want to be great. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, that's good. So the, the fun part is what we started with. The, the dream, the vision, mm -hmm. working hard, you know, all that. Oh, man, that's fun. Mm -hmm. This part is not fun. Hello. This is where people say, I don't want it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, that's not what I want. I want that highlight. I don't want that. <laughs> you just want the check. <laughs> that, that, that's the highlight that you want. <laughs> no, I love that. You know, I, I'm i not uh, a sports enthusiast, but I do love football. It is one sport that I watch, and it's one of few that I watch, and I just sit there and say, man, those men are crazy because they are putting the it's boom crash you know but nobody's ever really tripping off of you know first second third down you know that excuse me you 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 made a few yards you got knocked back several yards you got to push further to get the but it's constant pressure literal physical obliteration but like you said ain't nobody tripping off of that unless maybe someone is still laying down on the ground it's like whoa they're not moving then all of a sudden we got your attention that there's some like physical stuff that's going on but everybody's like look at the touchdown look at the little crazy dance that he did look at what the score is oh my god rewind that play did you see it and, oh whoa, he caught it tucked it and you know he's gone and it's like like you said and that's the same thing like you said with the entrepreneurs, it's like, oh, my God, look at them. They're taking pictures, and they're on the beach, and they're with their baby. And you know, you don't even know how they got there. <laughs> you, you really don't, but they're using it, and they're finessing it, you know. So it looks like that they have something that they don't, you know, they, that 
They, they have something that they haven't earned yet. And, and it's funny to me because I hear a lot of people talk about, yeah, I want to become an entrepreneur so that I can retire by the age of 30, so I can retire by 40. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you're an entrepreneur, you are wired different. You don't want to retire anyway because it's the life force behind what you do. If I turned around tomorrow and had a million dollars in my bank, and all I had to do was just wake up and just do whatever I wanted to do. It Maybe after about three days or a week, because I go so hard of like saying, who I would begin to feel funny. Yes. Because it's like, I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't said anything. I haven't made a live video. The creative nature in me and the process is there's something in you that's going to fuel you to want to do more. So some of you may be watching all of these videos just to learn that you was trying to cheat life and you decided to go down the wrong vein because entrepreneurship is not going to give you what it is that you think you're looking for. And some of these people, you know, they talk like, oh, I only serve this many clients a week and this is all that I do. And, you know, and I'm paid and it's like, okay, <laughs> well, let me see something. If I get a client to pay me $10,000 a month, am I really only speaking to them twice? Mm. You know, is that all that I'm doing? You know, and, what, and even if you graduate to that point, what work did you do to create a package? Because, baby, if I pay you $5,000, I better not have to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's one of the things, you know, if I can get adequate mindset training and leadership to do something for a couple of hundred, What's differentiating you and setting you apart? Because you're not that cute. Sorry, ladies, for the ones that's watching. You're not cute enough. You know, me and you ain't fine enough. You know, for somebody to just say, oh, yeah, I'm just going to drop all that money on you. You you can't dress up the package enough. There's, you're going to have to be able to have a reputation that's going to stand the test of time. Um, who is it? Michael Jordan that has a summer camp for kids. The, uh, I think he charges like maybe 15 grand or something for them to come and show them a couple skills, let them ask them some questions and stuff like that. But I'm not trying to be funny. Look at the man's track record. Look at what all he did. Here it is. You know how to ball and you know how to do some things. Maybe you played in high school, maybe even played in college. You're like, ooh, I got some skills. I know some stuff. I want to start a coaching program, and I want people to pay me 15 grand. You know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's quit, quit getting caught. Now, that's not being in a fairy tale land. That's just being – that's science fiction. It, it's, just, it's just not real at all, and that's what you guys – you know, that's what you're seeing. Like you said, the great ones, they create their greatness. They, they execute and you, you, their behavior. It's habituated. It's things that they do. You have to be able to measure stuff. If you're just doing things willy-nilly, you're just going to see your business be willy-nilly. You know, and I talk about this, too. I'm, I'm going to give it back, but it's kind of making me go on another tangent. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs in a low-level coaching, group coaching forum, and a lot of them are like, I just need to know how to market. I just need to know what to do so I can do Facebook ads. And I had to tell him, I said, let me explain something to you, baby. You don't want to know how to do Facebook ads if you don't even know what you're doing. If you don't know what your product or service is, you believe that you know who your ideal client is, if you just spend that money, you're going to be throwing it. What do you really know about the heart of your ideal client? You can't even get somebody to click the like button. You can't get people to give you hearts. You can't get people to share your post. If you don't have the money, you got to put the money. You still got to put the muscle regardless. But if you don't have the money to put behind the business, you got to put the muscle behind it. And the muscle will be measuring. Even something as simple as that. Okay, I finally got about 100 people that follow me consistently. How many of you take the time instead of responding to every post and clicking to click the link and say, okay, wait a minute, Pookie is the one that's liking my stuff. I don't want to serve Pookie. Wait a minute. I need to change my message. Okay, no. Mary Smith, like, okay, Mary Smith is the kind of client that I'm looking for. Let me see what kind of stuff she put. Are you studying? Because even virtually. See, what you was talking about doing when you were younger, studying people and knowing them and watching their behaviors, because people put so much of their lives on social media, it's not as difficult as some of you want to make it seem to understand and know your ideal clients, but are you measuring the engagement or are you sucked into what the rest of the world is doing and you just engaging and having fun on social media? Even measuring from that perspective, just throwing like a finite business token in there, look at what you're doing. Because if you got Mary Ann and Pookie liking your stuff, you send in mixed messages. 
you know, what are you doing to make your message so fine tuned and tweaked that you really do attract your ideal client? Because a lot of us, we don't want to do what we're supposed to do because we don't want certain people to hate us. We, but what they say, when you market to all, you market to none. But if you're being genuine and being authentic and you've honed in on who you are, everybody ain't going to like your stuff. You ought to, you ought to have a, a dividing line when you, pre, when you do your presentation for people to say yay or nay. And it's not a bad thing because there's so many people on the planet. Some are for you. Some are for me. Some are for him. Some are for somebody else. You know, so once again... Like I told you, I'll, I'll go on a couple of different tangents, but I just really want to make sure that my entrepreneurs that are listening, that you're really catching this, even in some of its finest and its smallest ways on things you need to do, you know, to elevate your business, measure everything. Yes. Yeah. So go, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you're doing a great job, I believe, of, of just really just breaking it down. And I think, uh, that's what a teacher is, right? That the, a teacher is to have the ability to take something big and break it down to a smallest form, so people can can use it. Yeah. Right? So that's that's um, that's where when you was talking about the type of people, right? So um, when when I when I want to coach someone, or um, and when I want to talk to someone, or or a company, or a business, it's about are you ready to be a champion? If you're not ready to be a champion, we can't talk. We can't deal with each other because, because you know, you're going to waste my time. I'm going to get frustrated. You're going to get frustrated because I'm going to put all up in you, and you're going to be like, oh, man, back up, right? So so um, the commitment of excellence. Yes. And and a lot of people, listen, a lot of people are not willing to go there. Um, you know, today world, less than 1% is ready to go there. Yeah. Okay. And and that's that's a small percentage, and the other ninety nine is just sitting there hoping and dreaming that something's going to fall out the sky. Sure and I tell people all the time, things just don't fall out the sky and hit you upside the head. <laughs> they they really don't. <laughs> it it doesn't happen, right? And um, and so you know that's that's the type of people <clears throat> that I'm drawn to is somebody who really wants to put in the work during yeah. this time, going to that wilderness. <clears throat> and really get really, really good at what you're doing. Um, the other thing you was talking, when you was talking, I, I was thinking about Joel um, Osteen, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody know him as a smiling preacher, right? Yeah. So he, he, he probably has the biggest church um, that's going on today, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, when he took over for his dad, um, they got to a certain level and they couldn't get past that level. Uh-huh. Okay. And so he's sitting there, he's looking around, he's saying, okay, what can I do? And he was doing a lot. He was doing a lot of work, right? He was doing a lot of activities. And then eventually it hit him. And he said, you know, the most important thing that I do is give my 20-minute sermon on TV on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That is my biggest impact. So I'm going to cut out everything else in my life. And I'm not going to do anything else but focus on my 30, my 20 minute talk on TV. And mm -hmm. because of that, so he started doing it, right? So he, he, he started um, focusing in. So, you know, Monday, all day thinking about it. You know, Tuesday, he'll, he'll take some, some little meetings. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all about that. Okay, and then he gets up there for that twenty minutes, and he knock it out the box. Knock it out the box because that's what he's found out what the most important thing is, and I'm gonna focus on, it, and I'm gonna craft it so good and so mm -hmm. well that it's gonna touch people. And and now he got the you know the biggest church um, that's out there. So um, again, to the point that you was making with the entrepreneurs, I want to do this, I want to do faith. Man, listen, find out what's important. Mm -hmm. an expert become a master a master now, a master it, it takes 10 years to become a master at something so a lot of people talking about 10 minutes it takes 10 years <laughs> come so on team you better get to work <laughs> right? yes um to become what you want to become so um you know these things are, are tough for people to understand it, it's tough for people to make that commitment because um you know they, they think they want to do, like I said, what they 
envision, but they don't know what it takes to get there. Yes. You tell them what it takes. They say, "Oh no, man, I don't. You know, I don't want to do all that now." <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, my players say that today. They say, "Man, I want to go to the NFL." I say, "Okay, well, if you want to go to the NFL, let me show you how to do it." And so we start meeting. Oh, coach, all that? Yes, all that. Yeah, all of that, and then <laughs> some. Because <laughs> right. the game didn't change. You're gonna have to do something extra. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so when again, when I took this job, we was dead last in Division One football. Okay, and um, and and I told people when I took the job, we're going to win championships. We're going to send guys to the National Football League. They thought I was crazy. I said, no way you're going to send guys from Campbell University to the National Football League. Come that can't on happen, right? And and so we sent three since I've been here. Yes. Why? Because those three paid attention. Mm-hmm. They paid attention to exactly what I was telling them and what the price they had to pay. Okay? Um, and, and they paid it, and they got the opportunity to go to the National Football League. And so my, my point in saying all that is, if I could take kids that had no clue of what the National Football League was even about, yes. right? They only watched it on TV and they thought that's what it was, and they committed mm-hmm. to the desert, then they realized their dream. Yes. 99% of us die in the desert. A lot of bones in the desert. Hello. <laughs> right? Only one percent of us come out with our dreams, and so I want to ri- I, I want to help you widen that that success rate. Yes, but people got to be willing to go to that desert, and it's a it's a tough situation. It's tough um, commitment, uh, but it's worth it. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, you know, I could keep you all day because if, yeah, well, you, you. if, if you say something, it's going to make me say something and it's going to make you say something. So, <laughs> I mean, number one, I'm in, and I want, if there are any last thoughts, I'm definitely going to pass it back to you to do that. But I just want to tell you thank you right now yeah. because uh, this is empowering. This is impacting. And I can, I can already see the effect that it's having on you guys that are listening and how it's really taking you all to a place of for real, for real, you know, internal reflection. I really want you to soak in that last part that he said. This is the primary objective of the summit. We, we want to defy the odds. We want to change the statistics. So we're speaking, you know, power, abundance, the empowerment in your life right now to say, you know what, instead of tripping off the fact that it's only 1%, how, why don't we raise it to two? Mm. Why, why don't we raise it to three? You know, if you can listen like those gentlemen listen, then you can get exactly what it is that you want. But take the steps, do the action, do the work, be habituated to the behavior, have the passion, you know, keep the work ethic strong. Understand it's not going to happen in 10 minutes. It's going to take some time, but it is possible, you know. Hold your dream for a second. Make sure that it's deeply rooted in you. All of these nuggets that he's been giving the entire time that we've been speaking, soak it in. Soak it in because this this is amazing. I I knew that you were going to bless it. You you came highly recommended, and I just really want to thank you. So I before I finish my thank you, thank you. Is there any you know last nugget that you want to you know give to the people in closing just to encourage them? Just we'll give them one more extra push, you know, <laughs> be, before we uh, depart ways. Well, you know, it's it's um, like I always say, you, you got to be driven by purpose mm-hmm. through the power of your dream, and that's mm-hmm. really where, where it's at. And uh, like my man Napoleon Hill said, you know, the mind can't conceive and believe and achieve, mm. right? and, and and that's really what what we have to do. And and uh, we all have greatness, and it's um, you know your job to unlock it. And so yes. uh, pay attention to these nuggets that everybody is talking about. That's going to help you unlock that greatness inside. So again, thank you for having me on the show, and um, you know hopefully it's a blessing to people, and and um, look forward to watching it. I'm hearing the other speakers, and um, and I look forward to seeing you on that stage one day. 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm, 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 I'm working on it, okay? Because it's consistently. But no, thank you for being here. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the nuggets. I know you, you could have been doing anything else, but you really, you blessed me. You know, I'm even gonna take it a step further and say, let me meditate just a little bit more. Let me see if I could turn it up, you know, a notch. You know, I, I really, really appreciate it. So everybody, thank you for joining us again for another segment. We're not done yet. We don't stop. No, we're not done yet. So keep a lookout for the next segment coming up. We're going to continue to empower you and educate you so that you can execute and achieve all of your heart's desires. This is your host, August Crenshaw for the Real Talk Summit. See you in a little bit. Deuces.